On this episode of Still Loading, let's take a trip, a trip in the Wayback Machine. Hey guys, it's Josh, and welcome to the newest episode of Still Loading. I'm sorry, I'm just going to let you know now it's going to be a short one in case you couldn't tell by the little timer when you downloaded the episode, but uh, unfortunately I had a couple cancellations and I wasn't able to do a full episode this week, but to compensate, I will be doing another small episode next week instead of taking my normal week off and then having a large one, or sorry, a normal episode one after that. So yeah, so what I figured I'd talk about instead would be uh, the rest the convention I went to a couple weeks ago, and the Sega Classic Game Console that I picked up about two or three days ago, or two or three days ago from the recording of this podcast. Uh, So let's start out with RetroCon. RetroCon is a small convention over in Pennsylvania that focuses on toys and electronics from the 70s through 90s. Um, They do a little bit newer, a little bit older as well. Uh, But the main reason I go is because of the video games. They have lots and lots of vendors who sell retro video games. And I'm a collector, so I love to go look at them, spend way too much damn money on them, and just admire some of the cool things that they have. As, for instance, I picked up this year a Power Glove, which I've always kind of wanted. And I picked up Crystallis for the NES, complete in the box. That was pretty nice. And uh, Game Boy Color complete in the box, and I believe like one or two other games, but their what they are, what their names are, excuse me, is escaping me right now. Uh, but I'll talk about the con, uh, just uh, not just the stuff I got, but you know the convention itself. Uh, the convention is awesome. I've been going a couple years now, and I keep going back, and I look forward to it every year. And uh, they always have an interesting group of voice actors or panelists. This year they had, well, every year just about now, they have the Angry Video Game Nerd, and I'm a big fan of his. They also have a lot of voice actors and, like, uh, wrestlers from the 80s. They, I've, they've had Sergeant Slaughter there a couple times. I was never into wrestling, so for all of you wrestling buffs out there, I apologize that I'm, like, not, like, either more giddy or less giddy. I don't really know. But I know he was a wrestler. Um... So, uh, he, he's been there a couple years. Uh, they had Robert Oppenheimer there, who's the voice of Falcor from The NeverEnding Story, and I believe Skeletor from uh, He-Man. And, you know, they have just lots and lots of cool people there. The Nostalgia Critic was there last year, not this year, but it was actually, he's been there, like, I think two years now. Not in a row, but just not this year, but he's he's gone a couple times. Um, for the most part, it is just a giant dealer's room. Nothing wrong with that, but it's pretty much just a big dealer's room. They have one room for panels, and, you know, they do, like, a kid's costume contest, a cosplay contest. They have a karaoke contest, and then they have, you know, Q&As with uh, different internet celebrities, with uh, different voice actors. Um, it just, people like that. It's It's a really fun time. They also have, uh, like, the Ghostbusters, like, Ghostbusters reenactor Star Wars, I shouldn't say reenactors, but, like, uh, like, a Ghostbusters, like, troop, people who, like, meet on a regular basis, and, you know, they have proton packs and all this, it's really cool, they have, they had a lot of cool stuff, they had the phone booth from Bill and Ted, they had the DeLorean from Back to the Future, they had, uh, the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters, they had a bunch of, uh, they had, like, you know, professional i guess it was professional groups of cosplayers would be the better way to describe them it was a lot of fun though um one thing i really like about the convention is that it is short and sweet it's two days long the con closes at five because it's just a dealer's room there's not really any concerts or anything like that but one thing they do do that's really cool is it's right next to a movie theater so every year saturday night or the saturday evening of the convention you can go over to the movie theater around seven o'clock and they'll show some retro movie uh this past year or this year it was uh, tmnt2 secret of the ooze last year i believe it was ghostbusters can't remember it was last year i don't really remember much anymore but, uh, yeah, so they have a lot of cool things, and I, I, I look forward to going back every year. I plan on going back next year as well. 
uh, I didn't, this year was cool because my fiance uh, got to go along with me. This was her first convention ever, so it was really fun to see her reaction to all this stuff, and she really enjoyed it. I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, we got to see a lot of cool, uh, like, uh, art, uh, artists there selling their art. I, one of my personal favorites is the Perler Beat Arts, uh, Perler Beat Art. I mean, you've probably seen me posting it on my, uh, on my Twitter feeds and my, oh, Twitter feeds, sorry, my Twitter feed and my Facebook page of the stuff that I've been trying. Cause you know, some guy I saw there was selling a bunch of stuff and I looked at him like, Oh, this is awesome. And I bought one, but the more I just looked at it at work, I'm just like, Pff. I can do that, and then, I mean, I can, it's just not nearly as good as those guys, my iron, I can't iron for shit, but, uh, yeah, so that was pretty much the convention, I wish I had more to say about it, but it was a lot of fun, and I, I'm excited to go back next year, uh, now to not so graceful segue into the Sega Genesis Classic Game Console, and what that is, is, uh, with the Nintendo, you know, with Nintendo releasing their NES Mini that's coming out soon, uh, Sega, or not, I guess it actually wasn't Sega, but Sega decided to release its competitor, uh, basically the same thing, but for the Genesis. And to be fair, I realize it wasn't, like, the Nintendo one is being released by Nintendo. It's being processed and developed by Nintendo themselves. The Sega one was just licensed from Sega, and it was actually, like, produced and, like, manufactured by a Chinese company. And... It just, it does, like, I was not impressed with it. I mean, I don't like giving bad reviews. I like to be passionate and happy about the things that I'm talking about, but I'll be honest, I was disappointed with it. And to be fair, it is partially my fault because I didn't do a lot of research on it. I just kind of like, oh man, Sega Genesis, I'll do that. I love the Genesis. And so I picked it up. And I was disappointed. Uh, let's start out with at least the good things, though. Uh, the good things are comes with wireless controllers uh and on top of that it can also like it has 80 preloaded games on it so you don't need the cartridges for them but it still comes with the cartridge slot so you can actually play your cartridges that you own on the console and just pop them right in so that was really cool i really liked that uh and that's about it I mean, okay, sorry. One last thing that was the good thing. The game selection is pretty good. I really enjoyed the game selection as well. Um, but what the problems with it are, are first off the audio and vid video. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Audio and video quality. Uh, the NES Mini is gonna has an HDMI out, or it's going to have an HDMI output. So it's going to be in HD. You're going to get to play classic Nintendo games in HD without having to buy a expensive as shit upscaler. Which I would love an upscaler personally, but that those things are like, you know, upwards of over a grand if you want a good one. And I don't, or maybe, maybe I haven't done my research, but they're expensive and I don't have that kind of money on me. The NES Mini, however, does. Uh, just has it built in. So that's going to be great. This Sega Classic Game Console, however, just has a normal AV output. Uh, normal, like, uh, what is it, RGB or whatever it is. You know, the red, yellow, white, but it doesn't even have the red the the red or the right part of the... right. I don't know what it's, which side it is, but the red, the red adapter. So you're only getting mono sound. So I tried playing Sonic 2 on this thing, and it was the most atrocious sounding thing in the world. It sounded tinny. It did. It didn't sound full. Like I plug in my uh, my Sonic game that I own on my Genesis, and I have an adapter that actually goes out from the Genesis to get all excuse me all the channels and or all the sound channels, and it sounds amazing. This sounds hollow, and it just does, it doesn't sound good. Um, if you guys are interested in, like, a really, like, apparently you can get a splitter, so that way it, you can kind of mimic, uh, stereo sound, but it's still not the same. Uh, if you guys, if you want it, it's a nice little thing to, like, bring over to a friend's house to show, but if you're, like, going for something that's, you know, oh, this will be, this will be really cool and really fun, if you're looking for something cheap to get a lot of your childhood back, it's only 50 bucks and it comes with 80, 80 games. And the games that come on it are like, you know, Sonic 1 and 2, 
uh, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast. It has all three, the first three Mortal Kombat's. It has, it has Fantasy Star 2 and 3. It has, uh, oh, I can't even think of it. It has a bunch of uh, classic arcade games. Um, but, and, which I was actually kind of bummed because it wasn't even like 80 Genesis games. It was like a bunch of Genesis games. And then like, oh, let's play Columns a thousand times. I'm like, I don't, like, I just, it, it does not work well and it doesn't look very good. I mean, maybe it's because I'm playing it on HGTV, but like, if you're going to release something like that, when you're trying to, comp- like, if you're the only one in the market, okay. But if you're trying to complete, I can't even speak, compete with what Nintendo's going to be putting out next month or later this year, and you know it's going to be an HDMI output, why would you release it with something other than HDMI? Why would you not look into trying to build an upscaler or something? Something at least, like, I mean, you're already emulating it anyway, so... But. I digress. It's not. It's not too important. It was only fifty bucks. I didn't waste that much money on it, and I did get to try out a. I'm going to get. Uh, I haven't yet, but I'm going to get to try out a lot of games that I haven't. I don't own or that are too expensive for me to own. So I'm really looking forward to that. Like the one game, uh, Comic Zone. That's one of the other ones I forgot. Tried that out for the first time. Think it's pretty cool. One of the toughest games I've ever played in my life, but it was pretty cool. Uh, so if you're 50 bucks to try out 80 different games it's not bad but if you're looking for something with actual quality i would not suggest this um so yeah i don't have much more to really say on today's episode i'm i'm really sorry it's so short i know it's the last couple have been like 40 minutes to about an hour but um all right uh to leave you at least i will play i'll add a couple extra songs on the end uh all the songs by the way that i put at the end of these episodes are provided by this amazing video game uh, music label called Game Chops. All their stuff is under the Creative Cores license, or sorry, Cores, Creative Commons license. So I give them all, I mean, it's not mine, it's just fantastic music. Uh, the links for all their albums and everything will be in the notes, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs> Thank you.
Bye-bye.